Hello, hello, Brent Fikowski here. Let's talk CrossFit training. Let's talk uh, Professor Project training, October 9th to October 15th. Another big week, uh, fun week of training, lots of fun stuff in here. Really enjoyed this one. D dive in a little bit here into the swim workout. Uh, please don't suffocate, please don't drown. Uh, in the water. Uh, so I guess you can't really suffocate in the water. You drown in the water. So uh, the goal of the training is to kind of push your comfort level in regards to having an elevated heart rate, having an elevated <sighs> panting breathing rate, diving into the water and maintaining that streamline and that initial speed you get from the dive for as long as possible, right? When you are swimming a race, the fastest part of your race is going to be jumping or pushing off the wall and streamlining and then you get into your stroke and then you maintain um, and then you you know get to your you know race pace and then you keep that race pace so in crossfit context if you're doing stuff on dry land you're doing burpees you're doing dumbbell snatches you're on the assault bike whatever it is and then you dive into the water your breathing rate is going to be elevated right it's different than when you're swimming where you're going to be fresh off the block so obviously you know pro swimmers are going to go as far as they can uh in swimming it's 15 meters and you have to pop up uh in crossfit you could go you know probably further but the trouble is, you know, you're doing burpees and jumping air squats in the case of this workout, and then you're you want to dive in, and and the and the the instinct is you're huff, you're huffing and puffing, you catch your breath a little bit, you dive in the water, and you go down and up, and and you take this huge breath. Well, you just lost all your speed. So what we're trying to do here is elevate that heart rate, doing as kind of little work as possible. So trying to do 15 fast burpees, um, 20 fast air squats jumping air squats. Uh, but if you have another piece of equipment you want to use, if you have an assault bike, that'd be great. Um, if you want to do, you know, dumbbell snatches or thrusters, if you have them, anything to kind of really bring up the breathing rate. And if you feel like this work is not enough to get the breathing rate up, then, you know, do those burpees, uh, hold your breath every second rep, right? Just breathe less so that when you dive into the water, you're like, you're, you're in the, you're in need of air. So get into the water and I want you to dolphin kick and streamline for as long as you can while you still like feel as though you're still, you know, keeping that speed. If you have an efficient streamline and efficient dolphin kick, that could be the whole length, depending on your level of efficiency. It might, you know, be like six strong dolphin kicks. Start swimming, keep your head down, only breathe when you need to. When you're like, oh man, I really gotta take a breath. I really gotta, okay, I'll take a breath. And then when you take that breath, the, the, the instinct is gonna go, <gasps> to do like a double and basically stop swimming. So don't get to that point. Do it a little before that where you can <gasps> and start doing doubles. All right. Um, fun opportunity to sort of like simulate that feeling of, you know, being exhausted and keeping your swimming efficient. So you can simulate that feeling uh, without doing like a full workout, but doing some intervals and really just focusing on that one aspect of what is usually a, a big problem in CrossFit workouts. The rest of that actual swimming, you don't really have to do that fast. Um, just try to get your breathing under control. I want to talk a little bit about this workout. Uh, this is on Thursday, uh, October 12th is the day. This is a fun one. So this is, uh, four sets of, you go 30 second hard effort on the echo bike. Uh, write down your cows and you can just do 30 seconds kind of easy spin recover 60 second rest You should be pretty fresh by then and you have a three-minute amrap of rowing Immediately overhead walking lunge um, have it with uh, dumbbells here But if that's really tough for you, you know, you can do a front rack You can do a barbell overhead is easier than dumbbells typically and then in the time remaining you got burpee, burpee box get overs. Um, if you don't have a high enough box, you can just do burpee box jump overs or even just like burpee pull ups. And kind of the goal here is just to to go hard on the echo bike every time, not like a full out sprint, but like a little harder than you want to. Hopefully recover and then kind of settle into like a grind pace. Keep those overhead walking lunges efficient. Keep that same pace on the rower and keep a nice smooth pace on the burpee box jumps. It's a good pacing workout, right? It's an opportunity to you know, kind of find a pace that's uncomfortable, knowing by that fourth round, you're gonna be more tired, even though there's quite a bit of rest, three minutes rest, knowing by that last round, you're gonna be more tired. Um, and so you kind of hold back a little bit in that first round, so you can keep the same reps in the next few rounds. Uh, I was able to kind of like do the first two rounds, and then the last two rounds, I added like two burpee box jumps. I was like, yeah, I might as well go a little harder, but kept the echo bike basically the same within a calorie each time. Uh, good kind of pacing workout, right? Like no, no, no need to go absolutely bananas there, uh, but a good opportunity to get some good work in, practice the overhead walking lunge technique. Um, if you have some extra time, uh, we obviously have like the, 
the overhead reach and stuff in the warm up. But if you have extra time to like really roll out the lats, smash the pec minor, um, you know, the trap, whatever it is to really get that overhead position, ideally you're holding those dumbbells right here as opposed to like this, right? Um, and then on Wednesday, as we've been doing, we got the skill work, uh, been getting good feedback about that. Hope you guys have been enjoying it. I know I have, um, just an opportunity to, to just work on skills, right. And, uh, kind of choose your own adventure here. I'm, I'm excited about the handstand hold drop set. Basically, you know, hold, if you can hold a 90 second handstand hold, just do that. But depending on your skill level, start with the toughest variation. You know, maybe that's a handstand hold against a wall, hold there for like 30 seconds. Oh man, I'm dying hop off and then go to feet on a box. Hold there for another 30 seconds. Oh man, I can't hold any longer. Grab some dumbbells or a barbell, hold them over your head. And so you accumulate 90 seconds like back to back. But if you're really skilled, you can just do a 90 second freestanding handstand hold uh, and then do a 45 second hang from the pull-up bar. Same thing, scale that if you need to with you know your feet on a box kind of thing or, or a band. Um, and then, uh, yeah, muscle ups. So have some drills in there. You know, for me, I was watching that video. I found a video of Bailey Martin. I uh, love his muscle ups, 30 unbroken. He must be doing something right. And, uh, you know, have a look at those. He's in the center lane there. Just beautiful muscle ups where he's pulling high. He's catching. He's holding some tension. He's not just oh, dropping into the bottom of that dip. He's holding some tension. His feet. So if this is his mass here and he catches and his legs and his feet are over here. And then as they swing back, he then pumps the knees up and he dips uh, while still being kind of like in a hollow position, right? So he's here, legs are here as he catches, like there, and then as they swing back, then he dips up, but he's not doing this, he's not arching, he's staying hollow and he's kind of staying tight through here. Beautiful ring muscle ups there, especially the first, you know, 10 to 20. Um, so yeah, have a look at those. Film yourself from the side, compare to Bailey Martin and see how close you get and see what you can do. I mean, for me, uh, the biggest things I try to focus on is keeping my legs, as I turn over, keep them pretty relaxed. Let them just kind of stay straight. Pull really, really hard, right? Pull hard from here, pull earlier. I think a lot of people, they wait until their toes are really high and then they do this ring row. So start pulling sooner. And then when I do turn over, I keep pulling and then I try to create tension by pressing down into the rings instead of just oh, relaxing into the bottom. That dip gets a lot harder if you're way at the bottom. Think about doing a handstand push-up. If you can hold some tension and then press up, it's a lot easier than going to the bottom of the handstand push-up, fully relaxing and then trying to press. Uh, and that's not to mention you're going deeper in the dip than if you're holding a little higher. And then... Uh, yeah, I just find on that back swing, you know, your feet are in front and as they swing back, just think about bringing the knees, um, kind of tucking the knees to the chest while keeping a little bit of tension in the core and not allowing yourself to arch down. I think about pressing the rings a little more like kind of forward like this, almost like I'm doing a pec fly. Yeah, big week of training. If you have any questions, hit me up, Professor Project Squad on Facebook there and uh, yeah, I'm excited for you all to dig into this. I love this week of training. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And I hope you do too.